In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about bowing technique and your left hand fingering technique. We'll start with the bow though. On your bow, you wanna make sure that you're using this bow hold. I've got all four of my upper fingers over the side of the bow. Your pinky might not be all that far over the bow, it might be pretty close to the top, but it should be at least a little bit over the side. Then on the other side, you'll see that my thumb, I hope I'm showing you, my thumb is bent. You want a nice, that camera, I can show it to you that way. My thumb is bent here. There's a little bit of a tilt in my hand towards the tip. You can see it like, if I was playing violin or viola, I'd have a really, really big tilt in my hand. When I'm playing bass, there's still kind of a tilt. It's just not as strong. Um, so you don't necessarily need to really, really be tilting like your violin or viola friends, um, but you do need a slight tilt. So all the fingers are over the side and your thumb is bent, which I'm hoping I'm showing to you, but I'm kind of far from the phone, so I don't know if you can see it. The other thing about bow technique, well, you want to make sure that you can see through it. Oh, I can just barely see through my bunny's mouth. That's important that you can see through that space. And it's important that when you do a bow stroke that your bow is not pointed up or pointed down. So I'll do a couple bow strokes where my bow is pointed downwards, where my tip is pointed at the floor. It sounds kind of ringy and kind of a higher sound than a bass should really have. You'll also notice my elbow is going very up high when my tip is pointed down like this. Look how high my elbow is. That's a very high up elbow. Well, it gives me goosebumps when I do it that way. Now, on the other side, if my tip is pointed up, I sound like this. A better sound, but I gotta tell you, it's kind of uncomfortable over here. If my bow is parallel to the bridge, or close to parallel, I'm not a very good bass player, but if it's pretty close to parallel, it's gonna make your best, strongest sound. You want a little put a little bit of arm weight into it. Just let that arm kind of sag and be heavy and give a good, strong, heavy arm. I can tell this is getting the best sound and also I can feel the instrument vibrating on my leg that's back over here. So I'm getting really good vibrations from the instrument. The best way you can check if your bow is straight is by making sure that as you finish your bow at the tip, like this, when your bow's at the tip right here, you want your arm to be straight, not bent like this. So when you're bowing at home, check. Oh, I'm at the tip, let me see, is my arm straight? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm at the tip again, I'm gonna check, is my arm straight? Yes, it is. tip. I'm checking my arm is straight. Oh, it is not. So I'm going to straighten it and then continue. You're going to get the best sound with a straight bow. And a straight bow happens when your arm is straight at the tip. Now, working on some of our um, finger techniques and strengthening, you're going to get the best sound if you have your fingers really heavy on the strings. Now that's easier said than done. It takes a lot of strength to play bass. And we don't usually say, we don't usually walk around saying, oh, I have a really strong pinky. We usually walk around and say like, I have really strong arms. But as a bass player, you need to have really strong fingers. You've got to strengthen your fingers. To do that, I've given most of you, if I haven't, you can come talk to me, I've given most of you a stress ball to work on this. When you're doing the stress ball, you want to make sure it's in your tape hand, not your bow hand, in your tape hand, and you want to make sure that your thumb is opposite these two fingers. Your thumb should not be next to your index finger. It should be all the way around, kind of making a claw shape. I've talked about that maybe. I call it the cello claw. And then you just want to kind of pulse and squeeze. You don't want to squeeze so much that it hurts. Then you kind of need to take a break. That's what that tells me. Um, but you want to have this pulsing motion. And that will help strengthen your fingers because we need really strong fingers that weigh the strength all the way down, really strong fingers. Your fingers, should weigh down the string all the way so that it touches the fingerboard. If your string isn't touching the fingerboard where your final finger is, then something's wrong. So you can do that with your stress ball. You can also put your hand, um, I would do an F sharp on the D string. You could also do four fingers on the G string, which is, um, that's a B, you've got G, A, B. And 
And then with all four fingers still down, make sure that you have a nice professional elbow and your thumb is bent behind. So you've got that nice claw shape still. With your claw shape, pick up one finger at a time. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And then go back. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, this one's hard. Tap, tap. Oh, I, I did the wrong one. Tap, tap, tap. And then pinky. Tap, tap, tap. When you're tapping, you need to keep your fingers in a curved shape. You're not tapping straight. You're keeping it curved. Keep it curved the whole time. Curved, 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 curved. As, cur as much as a pinky can be curved. My pinky isn't very curved. Um, after that, you can release your fingers and you can try a different kind of tapping routine, which is just one finger. And you want to try to get the instrument to make a sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's making a quiet sound and then just your middle finger. And press it all the way down to the fingerboard, making sure that your thumb is still bent behind. And then try your third finger. Honestly, your third finger isn't used a lot while playing the bass, but a strong third finger will help your pinky. So you wanna exercise your third finger as well. This one's hard for me. My third finger's pretty weak. It's making a little sound, good. And then pinky. Ooh, this one's tough. I'm gonna do this slower and keep it all curved the whole time. After you do those exercises, you can do what I call spider push-ups. Um, and spider push-ups are when you start with your fingers all curled, and then you push on until they're up, and then down, and then push on them until they're up straight, and then let them go. And then push on them until they're all straight, and then let them go. You can also do the taps that we did. You can um, keep them slightly curved, and tap one, and tap your middle finger, that one's hard and tap your third, oh gosh, this one's even harder. Oof, I'm not very good at my third finger. And then tap your pinky. You wanna keep them kind of curled. We're always practicing that claw shape. The stronger your fingers are, the stronger your sound's going to be. If you play with kind of a light finger on the D string for E, it's gonna sound like this. Ooh, not a great sound. Instead, if I have very heavy fingers and really use my claw shape and my strong fingers, I get this sound. Well, that's the sound we need. If I have a weak pinky and I only kind of press down my F sharp on the D string, four fingers on the D string, this is the sound I get. It's okay, but if I have really heavy fingers that are really strong in my claw shape, then that's a much more full sound. The whole bass is vibrating and creating that sound. So those are a couple things you can work on with your bow technique as well as strengthening your fingers.